The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explain mood, timeline, ironic twists, and conclusions. Welcome. Different types of music create different atmospheres and your mood might be changed by seeing different images. Today we're going to be looking at what mood and atmosphere mean and how they are created in the short story. The words we could use to describe the first scene include sad, depressing, gloomy, miserable, heartbreaking, tragic. The words we could use to describe this atmosphere include angry, violent, dangerous, and threatening. And we can describe this atmosphere as cheerful, happy, joyful, and lively. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to define mood, discuss how the author creates mood and atmosphere, discuss how mood contributes to the story as a whole. Just like mood and atmosphere can be created by music, the words that are used in the short stories can also create mood. In today's lesson, we're going to look specifically at how mood and atmosphere are created in literature and what effect this has. It is one thing to recognize a mood or atmosphere, but when you analyze literature, you will need to go a bit deeper than this. As in our previous lessons, we will illustrate how this can be done by looking at the short story, The Suit. But obviously the techniques and definitions that you will be learning about in this lesson could be applied to any short story that you may be studying. Mood is a tone or atmosphere created by the speech or piece of writing. So if you're talking about someone's mood, you're talking about how someone feels. If you are describing atmosphere, you're describing the feeling of a place or situation. When describing the feelings or emotions created in text, the terms mood and atmosphere are often used interchangeably. It is very similar in a piece of writing. The mood is the quality of something, like a film or a piece of music, or a short story that makes you have a particular feeling. In a film, the director can use lighting or music to create the mood. In writing, the author must do this through the language. The words the author uses creates a feeling. The feeling sets up the reader's expectations about what is going to happen, whether happy, sad, tense, or funny, and so on. Before we go any further, we need to add this new information to our mind map. Remember, these are the elements of a short story that you would need to consider, no matter which story you are studying. Mood or atmosphere creates feeling, develops characterization, and it heightens the impact. So how does the author create mood? One way to do it is through background or setting. For example, if the author chooses a peaceful valley in which to set the story, we are expecting one of two things, a relaxed story with a happy ending, or a complete twist where something terrible happens. So the mood can support the story, or it can form a contrast to the events in the story. Obviously the mood can change during a story. In a previous lesson we looked at the idea of conflict in a short story and saw how it could build up to a climax and then be resolved. A similar thing occurs with the atmosphere in a story. It can be peaceful at the very beginning of the story, then if conflict develops the mood changes and the mood can change again when the conflict is resolved. In this lesson we'll look at the mood and atmosphere in the suit. We'll also consider how Ken Temba creates this and tries to decide how the mood and atmosphere contribute to the story as a whole. Let's begin by looking at the mood or atmosphere at the start of the story. 5.30 in the morning. 
and the candlewick bedspread frowned as the man under it stirred. He did not like to wake his wife lying by his side, as yet, so he crawled up and out by careful peristalsis. But before he tiptoed out of his room with shoes and socks under his arm, he leaned over and peered at the sleeping serenity of his wife. To him, a daily matutinal miracle. The opening establishes the setting. The action takes place in a home in the bed of a man and his wife. Here we have a domestic atmosphere of early morning. The author tells us about the candle-wicked bedspread. Candle wicking is a type of embroidery which tells us that someone has taken care to choose or make something pretty for the bedroom. The mood is cozy and homely. The reference to the prayer of thanks tells us he is grateful for his life and content with his wife. Let's see what we can tell about atmosphere in the next paragraph. He had a trick for these morning chores. While the fire in the old stove warmed up, the kettle humming on it, he gathered and laid ready the things he would need for the day. Briefcase and the files that go with it, the book that he was reading currently, the letters of his lawyer boss which he usually posted before he reached the office, his wife's and his own dry cleaning slips for the 60 minutes, his lunch tin, solicitously prepared the night before by his attractive wife, and today, the battered rain cape. This scene confirms that the atmosphere is warm and productive. Although it is raining outside and many people have to share the small area, Philemon's little world is organized, clean and happy. I hope that you are noticing that I am not only describing the mood, but I'm also giving evidence from the text to support what I'm saying. This is an important tip. When you are analyzing literature, always back up what you're saying with evidence from the text. Another thing to keep in mind is the author's reason for setting up the mood in a certain way. Why do you think Cantemba spends so much time painting this scene of domestic happiness? The author sets the scene and the atmosphere in the beginning as being trouble-free to emphasize the complete change when Philemon hears about Matilda's affair. If Cantemba had not spent so much time describing Philemon and Tilly's life and relationship before discovering the lover, the contrast between what things were like before and what they were like after would not have been as dramatic. Let's see how the atmosphere changes. The bus ride home was a torture of numb dread and suffocating despair. Though the bus was now emptier, Philemon suffered crushing claustrophobia. There were immense washerwomen whose immense bundles of soiled laundry seemed to balk and menace him. From those bundles, crept measter of sweaty intimacies that sent nauseous waves up and down from his visor. Then the wild swaying of the bus as it negotiated Mayfair's circle hurtled him sickeningly from side to side. The mood changes to one of despair and once again this claim can be backed up with evidence from the text. Can you think of what evidence we could use to describe the mood as being one of despair? Jot down your answers. He feels like he's being suffocated. He feels like even innocent things like women's washing is going to crush him. He is so distressed that he feels sick, like he's going to vomit. So the good, clean, happy atmosphere has turned rotten and sick. Let's see how the mood changes as the story continues. When he returned, he found Matilda whipping on the bird. He dropped the suit behind her, pulled up the chair, turned it round so that its back came in front of him sat down, brought down his chin onto his folded arms before him, and waited for her. After a while, the convulsions of her shoulders ceased. She saw a smug man with an odd and meaningless inscrutability in his eyes. He spoke to her with very little noticeable emotion, if anything, with a flutter of humour. Now we see a completely different mood between Philemon and Matilda. How would you describe the mood now and what evidence would you use to support your answer? Gone is Philemon's thankfulness for his wife. Instead, the atmosphere is cold and Philemon is described as smug and inscrutable. In other words, Matilda can't work out what his feelings are, but he almost seems to be pleased with himself. This is a very strange reaction from a man who has just got such a shock. The atmosphere is calm on the surface, but there is a threat of violence and cruelty underneath. We see more evidence of this in the way Philemon addresses his wife. 
He still calls Matilda by her nickname Tilly or Tilla, but instead of joking with her in the same breath as he used her nickname, he threatens to kill her. All the way through the rest of the story, there is the contrast between the outside and the inside of the home. Outside, things carry on as normal, but inside the house, the tension is getting worse and worse. This creates a very tense atmosphere. The mood of tension increases and increases until it is almost unbearable. Eventually, looking for a way to get out of the house, Matilda asks Philemon if she can join the married women's club. This is how she asks him. She got up and walked into the other room where Philemon was reading quietly. She dreaded disturbing him, did not know how to begin talking to him. They had talked so little for so long. She went and stood in front of him, looking silently upon his deep concentration. Presently, he looked up with a frown on his face. Then she dared, Phil, I'd like to join one of those culture of clubs for married women. Would you mind? The pressure that Matilda is under is clear in this scene. We see this in the way that she feels dread about talking to him. She no longer knows how her own husband is going to react. When Philemon says yes to her request, the tension breaks and the atmosphere of the story becomes more relaxed. The cultural club was wonderful. She found women like herself, with time, if not with tragedy on their hands, engaged in wholesome, refreshing activities. The atmosphere was cheerful and cathartic. They learned things as they did things. They organized fetties, Bazaars, youth activities, sport, music, self-help and community projects. It was for her a whole new venture into human craft, and her personality blossomed. Philemon gave her all the reins she wanted. Now, abiding by that silly ritual at home seemed a little thing, a very little thing. What is your attitude towards Matilda at this stage of the story? Do you feel sorry for her or do you think that it is only right that Philemon is punishing her? Earlier on we said that the author has a reason for setting up the mood in a certain way. In the story The Suit, the atmosphere becomes more and more tense as the story goes on, so that we are almost relieved when Matilda is allowed to join the cultural club. Because of the way Cantemba changes the mood and atmosphere, by this point in the story, most readers are sympathizing with Matilda. So when she starts feeling better and when the atmosphere in their home improves, we start to relax as well. We start to think that everything is going to be okay and perhaps there will be a happy ending. The atmosphere really becomes positive and productive when Matilda is preparing for the party. We read about the shopping and cooking and the new dresses, our hearts lifts even further. The mood of the party is happy and content and we see that Philemon is even proud of his wife. But this upbeat positive atmosphere does not last. She went ashed grey, but there was nothing for it but to fetch her albatross. She came back and squeezed a chair into some corner and placed the suit on it. The guests were no end amused by the persistent mock seriousness with which the husband and wife played out their little game. Only to Matilda, it was no joke. It was a hot poker down her throat. Again, we see contrast in the moods of the scene. For the guests, everything is wonderful and they are having a great time, but Matilda is humiliated. The pain is described as a hot poker down her throat. The final atmosphere that is created is one of sadness and pity for Matilda, with the words that show that she was begging for love and longing for her husband to show her some kindness. And the tragedy is when we see Philemon's horror at the result his game has had. There she lay held as if just before she died she begged for a little love, implored some implacable lover to cuddle her a little. Just this once, just this once more. As you can see, the atmosphere or mood of a story can change as the conflict develops and then resolves. Be on the lookout for this as you read and study short stories, because it is an important reason why people get caught up in a good book or a good story. When mood and atmosphere are created by a skilled author, they cause readers to go through an emotional journey along with the characters as they read the story. When you are analyzing literature, the skill lies in analyzing how the author uses words, dialogue, setting, and the plot to show the changes in atmosphere. 
To see if you can do this, here's a task. Your task is to work out which words in this paragraph help to describe Philemon's mood. And why do you think Ken Temba describes the young women? The bus ride home was a torture of numb dread and suffocating despair. Though the bus was now emptier, Philemon suffered crushing claustrophobia. Then the wild swaying of the bus as it negotiated Mayfair Circle hurtled him sickeningly from side to side. Some of the younger women shrieked delightedly to the driver, Fuduga, stay the port, as he swung his steering wheel this way and that. Normally, the crazy tilting of the bus gave him a prickling exhilaration. In our next session, we'll be looking at the narrator and the narrative voice in the short story. These are more components of a short story that you may have to analyze. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>